What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Dark Order, checking in with you with another episode of Out of Left Field. For those of you who don't know what Out of Left Field is, skip back a few Out of Field videos, Out of Left Field videos to the first one and listen, and I'll explain it all to you. That way I won't get tongue-tied trying to explain it every single time. So, recently I was taking a road trip, um, got a call from a gentleman that wanted to share some stories with me. Now, this guy gave me a lot of stuff, I mean... A whole bunch of stuff that I think is great. Him and I, he and I are going to talk again real soon uh, once I settle back in and get situated. But I do want to share one or two of the stories that he told me. He's given me permission to share the stories. For the simple fact that this gentleman does not want his name disclosed, we're going to call him Mayhem. All right, so Mayhem gives me a call. And he's, uh, he had actually called me a couple of times, but. You know, when I finally got a chance to answer this call, I'm sitting outside a cigar shop in the car smoking a cigar. And, you know, we go through the formalities, bada bing, bada boom. He's like, man, I got a lot of stories I want to share with you. He says, I got stories about a Black Panther. I got some dog man stories. I got some Bigfoot stories. And off the rip, this is my kind of guy. You know, off the rip is my kind of guy. Down the earth, cool, not like some fanatical, ooh, I want to tell my story, I want to tell my story, I want to tell my story, I'm making up. I mean, just off the rip, Mayhem is my kind of guy, easy to talk to, free-flowing conversation, very few hesitations in this conversation, talking points. Well, he starts off by telling me the story about how he saw a Black Panther. So he and his friends are out in East Alabama, and they're fishing. And I the, I can't remember the name of the fish, but for we call it a catfish. And they have a fish that's similar to a catfish like that in East Alabama. And so they're out at night and they're fishing. And these guys have a bonfire going. A huge bonfire, as I described. I said, man, this thing was, this wasn't just a regular bonfire. He's like, man, this thing was huge. The flames were 20 feet in the air. And he goes down and he goes down to the river. He, you know, he's casting his line in the water, trying to catch the fish. But he has a live live line for his fish about 20 feet down from him and for those of you who don't know what a live line is that's where you take a nice strong uh, piece of fishing line and you actually hook your fish to that line that way the fish are still in the water and they're still alive and it, you know you don't have a cooler so that's how you keep them alive they're still on a hook but they're in the water and he's driving a, he's driven a stake in the ground so now he's out there fishing his boys are behind him the, the fire is about fire is about 40 yards behind him He's within the light of the fire, but at the same time, he's away from everybody. So he's fishing. And as he's there fishing, he starts to hear this flapping in the water coming from his left. And initially, his mind says, okay, well, you know, these are the fish flapping in the water. But he kind of looks over, and he keeps on hearing this flapping. It looks over again. Finally, he says, you know, I probably need to shine my light over there and see what's going on. So he clicks on his spotlight, shines it over in that direction. And what he sees is this cat. The description he gave it to me was this. He said, man, his cat's shoulders and upper torso, upper part of the cat's body was four feet off the ground. He's like, the head of this cat was humongous. And then his eye shine was this yellowish eye shine that glistened. But he's like, man, the head was huge. And he tells me, he says, at first... The cat's not really paying attention to him because it's trying to pull the line and pull the fish in. It's kind of yanking at the line. And it, when the light first hits it, it's not really paying attention to him. And then it diverts his attention from the fishing line over to him. And he says, man, this thing kind of hunched down. He said, at first, I think it was thinking about those fish for dinner. But now it started looking at me like I was dinner. He said, man, so I took off running back up to the campsite where the fire was. And I stayed by the fire the rest of the night. And he went on to tell me a couple of more stories about, well, he told me a lot of interesting thing about, things about panthers in their area and how um, panthers will dig holes in the ground and stick their noses in the ground and scream and holler. And they'll sound like a baby crying or a woman screaming. And that they've been known in his area to do that right outside of someone's front door, about 20 feet away from the front door. And so when someone opens the door, that they will attack them. And I, that's something I never heard before, but I thought it was very interesting. Because I really believe that these creatures are way more, these animals are way more intelligent than we give them credit for. These are predators. 
And I think that sometimes we think that we're the top of the food chain. And we are the top of the food chain because we have weapons. But you remove those weapons, um, i.e. AK-47 shotguns, throw us all in the same environment, we fucked. You know what I'm saying? And so I got another call from a, a young lady while I was on the road. Um, this is about an hour or so after um, I talked to the gentleman who has the Bigfoot and the Black Panther encounters. I got a call from a young lady. Great phone voice, by the way. I mean, like, an amazing, like, girl six, 1-800 call girl phone voice. And she starts talking to me about some of the experiences and encounters that she's had over the past six months, which... Her stuff is pretty goddamn freaky. She She's bordering on demonic activity, if not poltergeist activity, which she's in. She got some shit going on that. She got some stuff going on. So the conversation with her starts off with this incredibly sexy voice on the phone saying, hey, Dark Waters, how are you? And I'm like, whoa, OK, how are, how are you? Now, golden rule. Sorry, ladies, but the golden rule is, is if you sound real good on the phone, you don't look real good. So keeping in mind, the player in me is saying, yeah, she sounds great, but I, come on, man, I can imagine. So I keep it moving. And she says, I have some questions for you, some things I want to know, some things I need you to answer for me. Do you have time to answer them? Which I'm very appreciative of people who ask for my permission before they just start running off at them out. So. You've asked for my permission. I'm doing up but driving the smoke and smoke is filling up the car. So, yeah, let's talk. You know, girl six, let's talk. So we're talking. And she says, well, what are signs of ghost activity around your house? So I start going through the simple signs, things moving around, cold spots, eerie feelings that come and go. Um, and I went to the po- the signs of poltergeist, which are um, things actually moving in front of you, um, violent movements of furniture, equipment, things like that, ectoplasm on walls, on windows, on cups. So we we kind of go through all this stuff. And she shares this story with me about how she's in the shower. And as she's trying to get out of the shower um, to get her day started, she cannot open the shower curtain, not the shower sliding door, the curtain will not move. So she's literally, and you guys, you know, the shower curtains are these plastic curtains. It's not like it's a sliding glass door. This girl is yanking on a shower curtain, and the shower curtain wouldn't move. And then the water started getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And she's like, I take hot showers, but this was boiling hot. I mean, like, to where it burnt my skin, to where my skin is, like, bruised and burnt and red. And, and in some cases on her shoulder peeling. That's how hot the water got. And she says, I'm trying. She says, as I'm trying to, as I'm there with both hands, trying to peel the shower curtain back. It's not moving. It's rigid. She said, I try to punch it. It doesn't move. And I'm like, wow. Okay. You got some next level shit going on in your crib. You know what I'm saying? This is the next level shit you got popping on. And the next question I say is, well, how did you get it to stop? She said, I remember one of the things you said in one of your videos was that we need to pray. So she said, as soon as she thought of the name Jesus Christ, her weight is leaning on the curtain. She falls through the curtain, tumbling out of the tumbling out of the tub because one of those stand up tubs, you know, regular people tub, not fancy people tub, not a walk in shower, regular people tub. And there's that part that's by your shin. She stumbles out of that, falls to the floor naked. And she lays there crying and, and freaking completely out. She says it takes her about an hour and a half to get herself together um, in order to get dressed and get out of the house because she cannot believe that this happened to her. She she just cannot believe that while she's in the shower, she can't get out of the shower. And so, of course, to me, that sounds more than just ghostly. It sounds kind of demonic. But... Um, I let her proceed to tell me some more of her stories. And the, between these two people who have just called me, guys, their stories are good. I want to vet some more of their stuff. I shared those two with you guys as a teaser. And, of course, I'm a tease. You know, that's how I get down. I shared those two stories with you as a teaser because I think I'm going to do a number of their stories. 
In her particular case, it may be a while because I think she needs to talk to some people to get a little help. And I don't believe in the whole exploitation. Oh, you're being harassed by demons, but tell me your story because it's authentic. Um, that's bullshit. So we're going to see about getting her some help, getting her talking to the right people. And then once it's all settled, which to me sounds like she needs to get the hell out of that apartment that she's in. Because all this shit started when she moved into the apartment. I think there's something already there that she moved into. Um, I think once she gets out of there, then I think she'll be just fine and we can share the stories. But until then, <clears throat> this is your boy Dark Water signing out with another episode of Out of Left Field. I was about to say Inside Baseball. With another episode of Out of Left Field. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I enjoy sharing my stories with you. I enjoy sharing my stories with you. Go ahead and buy your T-shirts today. The rest of the products are getting ready to come out. If you haven't seen the Dog Man shirt, the the Bigfoot shirt is coming out next. Um, and I'm constantly adding more variety to the product. So I'm adding long sleeves, um, jersey type shirts, V-necks, everything. I'm constantly adding more variety because I'm a one man gang right now, um, especially due to YouTube with its retardation. I had just got it to the point to where I was going to have a full time um, virtual assistant who can do a little bit more on the business side. Lakea takes care of a lot of the stuff on the YouTube kind of um, video, communicating with people on the narration side of things. But I needed someone on the on the actual business side of dealing with those. Things like products and making phone calls. So I just got it to that point, and then boom, YouTube shot me in the balls. So, love you guys. I appreciate you, and uh, we'll be talking later.